Hello lovelies. I thought today that I'm just going to read you a bedtime story and try to make you fall asleep or just relax. So let's get started. I'm going to read you The Frog Prince. by Paul Geldown. In the old times, there lived a king whose youngest daughter was so lovely that the son himself, who had seen so much, marveled each time he shone over her. Near the royal castle, there was a great dark wood, and in the wood, under an old linden tree, was a well. When the day was hot, the king's daughter used to go into the wood and sit by the cool Then, she would take out a golden ball and throw it up and catch it again, for this was her favorite pastime. 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 One day, the golden ball dropped to the ground near the edge of a well and rolled in. The king's daughter began to weep and she wept and wept as if she could never be comforted. And in the midst of her weeping, she heard a voice say to her, What ails thee? King's daughter, your tears would melt a heart of stone. 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 And when she looked to see where the voice had come from, there was nothing but a frog stretching his thick, ugly head out of the water. Oh, is it you, old waddler? She said, said she. I weep because my golden ball has fallen into a well. 
Never mind. Do not weep, answered the frog. I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. But what will you give me if I fetch your ball again? Whatever you like, dear frog, she said. Any of my clothes, my pearls, and your golden crown that I wear. Your clothes, your pearls, and your golden crown are not for me, answered the frog. But if you would love me. and have me for your companion and let me eat from your plate and drink from your cup and sleep, 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 sleep in your bed, bed Then I would dive below the water and fetch your golden ball for you. Oh yes, she answered. I will promise it all, if only you will get my ball. But she thought to herself, what nonsense talks. As if he could do anything but sit in the water and croak, or possibly be anyone's companion. But the frog, as soon as he heard her promise, drew his head under the water and sank out of sight. After a while, he came to the surface again with, a, with the ball in his mouth and he threw it on the grass. The king's daughter was overjoyed to see her ball again, and she picked it up, and she ran off with it. Stop! Stop! cried the frog. Pick me up too. I cannot run as fast as you. But it was of no use, for she would not listen to him. Instead, she hurried home and soon forgot all about the poor frog. The next day, when the king's daughter was eating from her golden plate, the king and all of the court, there came a sound of something bitter, batter, hop, hop, hopping up the marble stairs. The next day, when the king daughter was eating from her golden plate with the king on the court there came a sound of something bitter batter up hopping up 
the marble stairs. And there came a knocking at the door and a voice crying, King's youngest daughter, let me in. When she opened the door, there was a frog sitting outside. Then she shut the door hastily and went back to her seat, feeling very uneasy. The king noticed how quickly her heart was beating and said, My child, what are you afraid of? Is there a giant standing at the door, ready to carry you away? Oh no, answered she, no giant but a horrid frog. And what does the frog want? asked the king. Oh dear father, she answered. Yesterday, when I was playing, my golden ball fell into a well, and while I was crying, the frog came and got it for me, after I promised I would let him be my companion. I never thought that he would leave the water, but now he's outside the door, and he wants to come in. When they all heard, then they all heard the frog knocking a second time and crying, King's youngest daughter, open the door to me by the well water. What promise you to me? King's youngest daughter, now open the door to me. You must do as you promised, said the king to his daughter. Now go and let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. So she opened the door and the frog hopped in. Then he cried. Lift me up to sit by you. But she delayed doing so until the king ordered her. When the frog was on the chair, he hopped up on the table. There he sat and said, Now push your golden plate a little nearer so that we may eat together. And so she did. But everybody could see how unwilling she was. Said the frog at last, You must carry me to your room, and we will lie down and go to sleep. Then the king's daughter began to weep, 
for she was afraid of the cold frog. Now the king grew angry with her and said again, You must do as you promise. So she picked up the frog with her finger and thumb, carried him upstairs, and put him in the corner. When she laid down to sleep, the frog hopped up saying, I am tired and I want to sleep. Take me up or I will tell your father. Then she fell asleep beside herself with rage. And she felt beside herself with rage and picking him up. She threw him with all his strength against the wall, crying, Now be quiet, you horrid frog. But as he fell, he ceased to be a frog and suddenly became a prince with beautiful, kind eyes. And the prince told her how a wicked witch had bound him by her spells, and how no one but the king's daughter could have released him, and that they would be married and go together to his father's kingdom. And so they were married and set out for the prince's kingdom in a golden carriage drawn by eight white horses with red plumes on their heads. And beyond the carriage was standing faithful Henry, the servant of the young prince. Henry had suffered much sadness and pain when his master was turned into a frog. He had to wear three iron bands around his heart to keep it from breaking. But now he was full of joy at his master's happiness. Suddenly, as they neared the castle, castle, there was a cracking sound. The prince thought it must be a wheel breaking. But it was a bursting of the bands from around Henry's heart because he was now so relieved and happy that the prince was free again. The end. The end. The end. you right to sleep.